Hey, happy Wednesday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus, and I'm update you on these impacts. We still got the storm system moving in from the west, still bringing all this flooding all down California for today and for tomorrow as we go through the beginning of February. It's going to bring it down Southern California. Matter of fact, as we go into this big trough for a few days, maybe even a week, you're going to have another storm system coming your way and bringing you more flooding as well. This is still bringing a lot of snowfall towards the western side of the U.S. Now, this is still bringing a lot of flooding across the south and the southeast. I know this is a lot of flooding. It did help with y'all drought that y'all did have. But we're about to go into pattern changes after we go through this season. After we go through winter, we're going through the neutral phase from March and April. And as we go towards hurricane season for 2024, it is going to be stronger. Just like I said last time, we're going towards a La Nina phase. Now, this is going to bring warmer conditions across the lower 48 of the U.S. and drier conditions. So this is going to bring your drought right back. So you can see here for all of North America, you have them storms coming all down the West Coast, just whipping on down. This is going across Arizona as well. Matter of fact, this is going to strengthen for the beginning of February. This trough is going to stay this way for quite some time. As you go towards Friday and Saturday, we do got that one day of severe weather that has popped up. Then these storms are going to keep going across the south and east as you go Sunday and Monday. Monday, even Tuesday as it goes right offshore and just builds up and leaves. This is still bringing potential damage and winds in certain areas, the South Central, the Southeast, and the West Coast, the Southwest. Plus, it's bringing the heavy flooding and a lot of heavy snow. But as we go into Friday, it's going to start bringing our severe weather. Now, I think this could extend another day or two as we get these surface lows building up. Could bring more severe weather as we go Sunday and Monday. So just be aware, I will keep you updated. Right now, all they have it for is Friday. And you have the next strong system coming right towards the West Coast as you go towards Monday. So this is going to be a few days of a lot of storms and bring a lot of snow, a lot of flooding, and your damage and winds. And there is an outlook for severe weather for Friday as that surface low starts to build up and starts moving towards the southeast. So far, here's your cities in Texas at risk. National Weather Service does have it as isolated severe thunderstorms will be possible beginning late afternoon Friday across parts of the north central to south Texas. Also saying that isolated severe hail should be your primary threat, but there is a chance for localized severe wind gusts and maybe a brief tornado. Then as that goes right across the U.S., you can see the update is still bringing the big winds. So you still got the 50 and the 60 miles per hour wind gusts on the southwest. You still got the high 40s to 50s in the south central and getting stronger. The 50s to 60s, even the 70s for the southeast. I think the southeast is what we need to watch for the most as we go through this transition. I think that that is really going to intensify for a couple of days. And I really think there will be more outlooks for this. Because you can see as you go into Sunday. You start getting the banding going on. Bringing a lot of the wind gusts with it. The 50, the 60 and the red. Going right across Florida. Then as this tightens up and goes across the southeast. You get another strong surface low that builds up right along the edge of the Carolinas. And that's bringing a lot of 40, 50 miles per hour wind gusts with that as well. As that comes offshore, even hits the eastern side of Florida as you go Tuesday and Wednesday. So I think that could be ramped up just a little bit more as that passes by. Because there's a lot of favorable environment, a lot of lift in that area. But this is still bringing a lot of flooding. It's still going to add up to a lot of rainfall on this first dip all the way till Friday. But this trough is lasting for a week. And it's going to continue for the west coast as this goes across the southeast bringing everybody a lot of rainfall. We're talking inches of rain. And you are literally getting anywhere from five to seven inches all down the West Coast. Even stronger as you go towards the LA area, all the way up to seven, maybe even up to 10 inches. And for Arizona, you're getting a lot of flooding as well, all across the South and the Southeast. Look at this, heavy rainfall all across Southern Florida, all the way into the Bahamas. Heavy rainfall coming your way and maybe really heavy 
for the coast of the Carolinas, maybe South Carolina by Myrtle Beach. Be aware of that. That looks like a hot spot. And still showing that transition is bringing feet of snow, a lot of snowfall coming to a lot of people. So it looks like Denver is going to be getting some. You can also see over here for Flagstaff getting some heavy snowfall. Not a lot for Albuquerque, Salt Lake City getting a lot. A lot of people getting some good snowfall over here. Idaho Falls getting a lot. Boise not getting a lot of snow. It's not getting a lot for Eureka. Y'all going to be a lot of flooding. It is going to be the higher elevations of California. But looking like a lot of snow. This is only within the next five days. Keep going in 10 days as we go into this pattern for a little bit longer. You can see the snow really starting to add up. 60 some inches of heavy snowfall coming your way. At this point, now you got Flagstaff potentially getting over a foot of snow. Now you got Austin, Nevada. You got Eli, Nevada. You got everywhere in Nevada getting snow. Richland, Utah, Salt Lake City, Utah, even Denver still sitting around that two or three will be higher elevations. This is literally bringing a bunch of snow. Look over here for Idaho, Western Montana, a lot of snow for y'all as well. Missoula, six. Salmon over a foot. Boise getting in on this eventually, but it's going to be after five days. Twin Falls, Idaho Falls, just not along the coast. The coast is going to see the flooding. So now look at this. Now your flooding is straight to the slight risk for today and this is going further down southern california for tomorrow so for today this is your chance for marginal and a slight risk for flash flooding all the way down san francisco all the way down towards santa barbara now for tomorrow it's going to go further down california you got your marginal in fresno but all the way down la all the way down for your slight risk y'all need to pay attention this is going to happen to y'all again because we're going to stay in this trough for about a week now, as we go into Friday, here it goes transitioning towards the South Central, bring your chance for the flooding. For Saturday, it's going to move over and bring you a slight risk for Louisiana, Southern Mississippi. You still got the marginal going all the way up towards Kansas. And as you go into Sunday, it's going to move over towards the Southeast. You're going to be in a marginal for that flooding. But you also can see as you go from Friday to Saturday, and then Sunday, when that moves across the southeast, you got it again over to southwest when we get that next system, putting you straight into that slight risk for flash flooding again, all the way from Santa Barbara, all the way to L.A., and San Jose, all the way in the marginal, San Francisco in the marginal, Sacramento in the marginal. This is going to come right back. This is going to bring a lot of flooding. And that is what we have the outlook for. You can see we have that flooding expected over here in the gray stripe lines, also for Arizona also down the west coast in california heavy precipitation will continue on the 7th and 8th remember this will be that second one so at the heavy snow and all this pink and the high winds are still coming and i believe it will go for the southeast as well but after that then we're going to start switching on this pattern so you see how much above average your temperatures are going to be all the way until the 9th Below average, kicking in on the West Coast. And you can see as you go all the way to the 13th, the middle of February, your above average temperatures really kick in. You get that big warm bubble, and your below average temperatures do kick in from that cold air that's moving in. You also can see the updates. So all this above average temperatures moving over, below average temperatures moving in. By the time you go to the 14th and the 15th, this is going to bring those colder temperatures I talked about yesterday. But you can notice it does transition as you go towards the middle of February, towards the 20th of February, below average temperatures will be kicking in for the Great Lakes going out through the Northeast. Now that's going to mild down as we go through March and our below average temperatures will be on the mild event. We'll be going into our spring, I believe. And you do see the latest on our Arctic Oscillation. That cold air is coming right back around the 16th. So far, I am showing that is around the Great Lakes and the Northeast. Still too far to be sure. You can't see that far yet. And this is literally the end of the run with GFS on your temperatures and your wind chills right around the 16th. So you definitely can't count on that. It always will change that far. Matter of fact, you can see the update since the last update I did on the Enzo that we are going towards April, May, and June. May, June, and July, we're going to be in that neutral phase. And that's going to change things as well. Then we have what's coming later for hurricane season. And when you're in that neutral phase, you start getting your cold jet coming in from the upper Midwest to Great Lakes, going out through the Northeast, just like we're starting to see transition as we go towards the middle of February. And you also get warmer and wet across the Southeast. Now, once this transitions from neutral 
to La Nina, you're going to stay warmer across the lower 48, but you're going to be drier as that transition happens. So it will begin your drought. But you can see the update with the CFS climate forecast system. It does see that far after we go through this warm bubble, it will continue to stay warm in the lower 48 while it stays relatively average to cooler on the northern side of the U.S., but as we go towards the middle of February and the end of February, what you get is a lot of that neutral phase. You get the cold air coming in from the Great Lakes, going out through the Northeast. And it stays that way as we go towards the end of February and going into March as well. The cooler air will remain coming in from the Great Lakes, going out through the Northeast, and it's going to warm up every day for everyone else as this cooled air transitions. You see that? We stay in that warm bubble for our highs. But you can also see that as we go from June, July, and August and continue, the La Nina is going to kick in and it's going to get stronger. Now, once the La Nina kicks in, you stay warmer on the lower 48, but you also are drier. So this is where your drought is going to start kicking in. And you see that your stream keeps coming in from the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes goes out through the Northeast, but you're going to remain wetter for the Ohio Valley and the Northwest. This is your typical pattern for a La Nina. So every three to five years, this usually comes around, and this is when your drought usually is going to kick in. And you know it will mess with the hurricane season because remember, El Nino, you got sinking air going through the Atlantic and the Caribbean. You got rising air in the Pacific. But when you go through a La Nina, it switches. You get sinking air going through the Pacific. You're going to get cooler waters as well. And you get that rising motion, that lift, warmer waters in the Caribbean and the Atlantic. But typically during the La Nina, you have stronger hurricanes and more of them. So as this comes off the coast of Africa, a wetter monsoon moving a lot of moisture through, there's less winds, there's less shear, there's a lot of warm temperatures, and just favorable environment to push these to the west faster and stronger and possibly going up the coast as well. So as you deal with storms versus hurricanes, and versus Cat 3. Look at this. The blue is La Nina. The white is the neutral. And the peach is the El Nino. So last hurricane season versus any other system, we're going to get more in neutral, more in La Nina for storms, for hurricanes, even for Cat 3 hurricanes. Everything's always stronger during a La Nina season. Some people say it's almost double, sometimes triple, the strength. So we will start to see more storms forming and gaining more intensity as they form. So we will see bigger hurricanes as well for a La Nina season. So thank you again for your time, everybody. I just want to give you a quick update on the impacts on this system. Everybody knows about this transition we're going through. So I think I've just a quick update on impacts was good enough. And to remind you of these next two seasons we're about to go through. It's about to be above average, about to be a good warm up. Cold spills moving through certain areas, but then we're going to have our hurricane season ramping up. So I thought just for a Wednesday, a quick update of everything would be good enough. Hope you have a very great day today. Thank you so much for visiting me. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe if you've never been here before and click that bell to get the updates. And before you go today, Philippians 2, 1 through 5. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hope you have a very great day out there. Make sure you prepare for these impacts now. And remember, later on, you are going to be looking towards potentially a drought coming back to you. So I know you're flooding now, but remember what could be coming later. But I do wish the best for every single one of y'all. And remember, no matter what, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I hope he always keeps you safe, blesses you, blesses your family, and fully restores you for the rest of your life.
and forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Have a great day, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.